loneliness can cause existential crisis and Dark Souls is very lonely. Right from the get-go, you are casted upon into a world where the unknown and only the unknown awaits, which plays as a crucial role into the subject of existential crisis. Existential crisis is a form of inner conflict. It is basically making you feel that your life has no meaning because you're surrounded by negative thoughts or Fucking piece of shit ruining my intro. <sighs> Maybe depression. It is really sort of a peculiar problem because the only way you can move on from it is by really moving on. Because the more you think about it, you really won't find an answer that will quite satisfy you. Dark Souls will raise a lot of questions but will rarely answer any of them. And that is how existential crisis also works. It raises a lot of questions, like what is the purpose of life, but you will never get an answer to that. And one must find purpose in life by creating them. And in Dark Souls, you can create purpose. By killing them all! <laughs> Something about being lonely is also very peaceful. So it's not all bad. You're just another hollow in this doomed world. How are you any different than the ones that came before you? If there is no one to guide you through this forsaken land, will you believe everyone you meet? How can you? In every part of Dark Souls, the feel of existential crisis is present. From the Northern Asylum to the Firelink Shrine, Dark Souls is all about overcoming challenges. By overcoming these challenges, one proves to be the best, and all others who came before but gave up are all who couldn't find their purpose in this wicked world. So they all faded away. Depression is one of the reasons existential crisis happens. It is very common for people to suffer from anxiety and depression. When life gets difficult, some people really cannot deal with it. So it acts as a challenge for them. Those who give in are the ones that become a tragic example of life. But those who keep up the fight and never backs down, as long as they can, are the ones winning. The belief that your life has no purpose and you exist just for the sake of it is what makes you go down into this doomer rabbit hole. In Dark Souls, there are no waypoints, map, or compass to guide you or tell you where to go. But none of that matters. Eventually you find your way through trial and error. And this is also how people deal with depression. There really is no clear solution to this problem. But by putting an effort and trying to move on is how eventually one can save their soul. I was recently playing Dark Souls again and it got me thinking, why does this game feel so much like a commentary on things like war and also the peace that you can find within that very war? It's like when everything is destroyed, it's horrifying. But at the same time, there is a sense of peace and freedom that also come from it since there is nothing to worry about anymore. When you lose your soul and humanity upon death, it angers you and frustrates you, but it also controls you. You just cannot let it go until you collect your soul and make sure your progress have been saved. On the contrary, when you die twice and leave behind everything that you worked for, it finally frees you from the burden and you feel alive. It puts things into perspective. And to parallel that, depression also controls you and nerfs you in every single way, which ultimately will drive you towards existential crisis. Even in this, the duality exists. Take this as an example. The first hurdle that you face is the Asylum Demon. He can easily kill you. But if you're careful enough, you can get him first try. And you also get to know that this is the demon or monster that got Oscar badly injured when he dropped the key to save you from the prison. He sacrificed himself because he believed that one day a chosen undead will save everyone. So by believing or having faith, Oscar actually found his purpose. And in real life, people believe in all sorts of things, whether it be in science or religion, People always try to find purpose in everything and faith makes it easier for them to be fulfilled.
When you meet the crestfallen warrior in Firelink Shrine, he tells you your objective. You can trust him or not. The game does not get in the way at all. However, you're likely to trust him since he's the first person you ever meet in the game. A part of you wants to trust him, because a part of you want him to say the truth and be friendly. Even though logically, you never met this person and so do not know what their motives might really be. Later on, when you meet Soler of Astora, you find him also clinging to his faith, which gives him his purpose. Again, you are most likely to say yes to his offer because it's only human to work with other human beings and to make meaningful connections in the world. And just like that, you don't even realize this but you start to find purpose in the small things. The fact you are just a tiny and minuscule part of this enormous world also adds to the whole existential crisis feeling. But what does it tell us when we take rest at a bonfire and all the enemies respawn? Does it mean that for taking rest in this wicked world, you get punished by having to face more undead? The world might be dying, but there are still trees and grass all around. The sun is still as bright as it used to be with all of its rays hitting the world. This is the age of fire and we know that fire brings contradictory forces with it. A clear sign that no matter what we think, the nature and in general the universe does not stop for us at all. It is a reminder that how much insignificant we truly can be compared to the rest of the universe. But why does it matter when we are the only ones able to even comprehend it? the only ones capable to even see it in its full glory. But I will keep on running around circles, so I think it's time to come at a conclusion. Life is not really meaningless. Through small tasks and showmanship, people can find purpose every day, and it's also translated into Dark Souls. And also by overcoming challenges, you will always become better. Or at least, that's what I think of. Thank you for watching. Become a Patreon member or join my YouTube channel to get early access to videos and some behind the scenes footage. And with that being said, Perfect Generator signing out.